I'm Steve Levine, author of The Powerhouse. I was a war correspondent for a long time, but the war I came across in 2010 was like none I'd ever encountered. Jeff Chamberlain, the man who would be my guide, called it a battery war, and he was right. It looked like a free-for-all. So many countries intended to dominate the $100 billion future industries that all expected. 20 countries in all, by my own count, said they were going to invent a super battery and the electric cars into which the batteries would go. But the main contestants were a quartet, Japan, South Korea, China, and of course the United States. When Chamberlain spoke of the war, that's what he meant. He was going to beat the giants from Asia, especially China. If we're competing with other countries to try to own large sections of the economy, we have to think deeply about how we're going to do that competition. If we're only going to do the research required to prove that a new technology become viable and then stop there, I assure you our competitors are not thinking that way. They'll do anything they can. I know this from working in the chip industry. Our competitors will do anything they can to own that technology. The battery guys were like scientists anywhere, except for one important difference. If they were successful, they knew they would change the world. If anyone didn't know, Chamberlain reminded them. If they could invent the new super battery, he would say, they would enable the electric car age, along with solar power and wind, making all of them suddenly mainstream. They would pave the way for big new industries that matter on a geopolitical scale. Their super battery would undermine Vladimir Putin and OPEC and it would change the trajectory of climate change, making it less apocalyptic. Wan Gong was the general of the Chinese front. He grew up in a village outside Shanghai, where his only encounter with any motorized vehicle was with a tractor. He wanted to visit Argonne National Lab. Argonne had a legendary history. At the original lab at the University of Chicago, Enrico Fermi created the first self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction, which led to the Manhattan Project. Now Argonne was best known as the home for the United States' premier advanced battery team. It was home to Jeff Chamberlain's scientists, home to America's team in the battery war. Right here, absolutely. They've been bragging about you. <laughs> What's your name? Kevin Gallagher. Very nice to meet you. Kevin. The ironic thing was that if the Argonne guys did win, it would be mostly foreigners who won the day. I grew up from a small city called Changshin in Zhejiang province. It's really close to Shanghai. I'm a, I'm a New Zealander. I was born in New Zealand. I came from Chile about 30 years ago to get my PhD in chemistry. All right. Well, I was born in, uh, in a small city in, uh, in Morocco near Casablanca called Baname. I'm from Pretoria in South Africa. I hope you enjoy the powerhouse.